Welcome to Reading and Writing Skills, Lesson 4, Mechanics, Second Semester, Quarter 3, Week 4. I am Mr. Nel Prinsambala, and I'm your teacher for this course. According to June Casagrande, grammar snobs are great big minis. How is that quotation related to our lesson about mechanics? So what do you have in mind as you hear the word mechanics? And how is it related to grammar? Would you like to be labeled as one of the great big minis? Whenever we say minis, people who have small mind. So meaning to say, not being snubbed when it comes to grammar in writing will, will make you, will make you what? What's the term? Will make you someone who is not considered as great big menace, okay? So let us find out how is the knowledge about grammar will make us uh, not considered as big menace and how is it related to our lesson about mechanics. So let's proceed to the next slides. Lesson 4. Mechanics. In this lesson, you will utilize your writing prowess through practice skills in grammar. You are also expected to learn the mechanics in writing such as spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and paragraphs, and explaining a position in an essay. So in this lesson, mechanics, you will become a sentence mechanic, wherein you will activate your knowledge about spelling, rules and spelling, punctuations, capitalizations, and knowledge about paragraphs. Because as you activate your knowing about those, then definitely we will be that good on producing quality written text because we are now already on the fourth property of an effective, uh, of an effective written text, which is mechanics, okay? What's in? Let us recall each of the previously learned properties by classifying the words or phrases inside the word pool. Write your answer on the respective sheet of paper below. So we have the following phrases, learnings, coming from the previous lessons that we had. So we are going to categorize each under, under the first three properties of well-written text that we tackled. So we have organization, coherence and cohesion, and language use. So the first entry there, we have ending part of the story that is under organization. How about connection of thoughts and ideas? Connection of thoughts and ideas will be under coherence and cohesion. Okay, how about the conjunctive adverbs? Conjunctive adverbs also belong to coherence and cohesion. How about the sequence of events? Sequence of events, we, where are we going to write it? It will be under organization. Okay, so that will be under organization, but also it can be classified under coherence and cohesion since we are talking about sequence of events, okay? Then next, we have jargons, slang words. Jargons and slang words, they will fall under language use. How about adverbial conjunctions? Where are we going to classify it? You are correct. It, it will be under coherence and cohesion. Next, sentences to paragraphs. How about sentences to paragraphs? We are going to have it under organization. Yes, so that is under organization as well as under coherence and question. Okay, how about organization of thoughts and ideas? Where are we going to have organization of thoughts and ideas? Of course, we are going to have it under organization. You have the word itself. Because as you organize thoughts and ideas, you can identify now which is the introductory par paragraph, middle paragraph, and concluding paragraph. 
also, it can be under coherence and cohesion because we have their what? Organization of thoughts and ideas to develop the so-called oneness or unity in the ideas presented in a paragraph. Okay? Next, context clues. Context clues will be under language use. Okay? Why language use? We know very well that context clues are used by authors, by writers, to provide the meaning for a difficult term that is used in the text. So, providing it will what? Will make the statement contain an effective language in it. So, context clues. Next, and the last entry, transitional devices. Where, where are we going to, to place transitional devices? Okay, you got it correct again. So, it can be under organization and coherence and cohesion. So, we are done dealing with this activity. Let's proceed to the next slide. What's in? Now that you have learned how to arrange your ideas, link your sentences and paragraphs, and use appropriate language, you are now ready to apply mechanical neatness in your written text. This refers to how you will adhere to acceptable grammar and other rules in writing. So, mechanical neatness. Having their what? The application of your knowledge dealing with grammar and other rules in writing. The structure, the style. Remember the word aesthetic as we discuss uh, organization. We're in, in judging essay, essay compositions or journalism outputs. Judges do consider the so-called aesthetic or neatness, the so-called mechanics. Actually, in every composition, even in poster making, you have the, the, the criterion dealing with mechanics, highlighting grammar, the use of correct grammar. Okay? So, why do I have there the image of punctuations or punctuation? Because that's the common error in compositions or in written text. Forgetting the proper use of punctuations in sentences in the written text. So, of course, we have period, question mark, exclamation mark, quotation marks, parentheses, colon, apostrophe, comma, ellipsis, and other, other punctuation marks. So, I hope uh, you will again activate your knowledge about your lessons dealing with punctuation marks when you were in grade 9 in junior high school. Okay? So, let's go on. What's new? Read the letter below. Identify all errors by placing the correct capitalization and punctuations, correcting misspelled words, and writing the sentences in paragraph form. So, we have here a sample letter that contains errors in grammar. So, how are we going to correct them or what will be the corrections that we are going to apply in the sample letter that contains errors? So, first, the structure. So, that is block style. So, is it applicable? So, you check your knowledge regarding uh, the style, the format of the letter. So, first, we have 233, Sitio Ibaba, Barangay Santisimo, Santisimo Sorasario, Santisimo Sosario, San Pablo City, Laguna, 24 August 2020, Miss Kasume Watanabe, Gems and Jewels INC, Santa Cruz, Laguna. Dear Ms. Salazar, I attended your career planning workshop at the Trace College Library on 15 December 2018. Your, your presentation was just what I needed to organize myself. Would it be possible for you to send me copies of your resume writing guidelines, the worksheet, and the sample? And the sample. Unfortunately, you ran out of these handouts before you go to me. You got to me. Sincerely, Menard B. Banca Jr. So let's apply 
uh, copy reading skill on correcting the errors in the given sample letter. So we are going to what? To have uh, August 24, 2020, August, capital A, 24, 2020, 233, sitio ibaba, capital S, capital I, then space between sitio and ibaba, then capital B, for barangay, then period, it's not, uh, it's period, then space, Santa, that's Santissimo Sosario, Santissimo Sosario, so capital S, then we will have San Pablo City, Laguna, capital S, Capital P, capital S for San, space Pablo, then capital P, space, then City, capital C, comma, and capital L for Laguna. Okay? Then space, we are going to have the Miss Kasumi Watanabe. So we are going to have capital M, then S, period, space, capital K for Kasumi, space, and capital W for Watanabe. So, we are going to have, we are going to have what? The position under Miss Kasumi Watanabe, her position in the company. Then, we are going to have the name of the company, Gems and Jewels INC, capital G, capital J, and capital I, and period for INC. Then, Santa Cruz Laguna, capital S, period, space, capital C, for the Cruz, then space, then we are going to have comma, capital L for Laguna. Then look at the salutation. Dear Miss Salazar. Who's Miss Salazar? I thought the letter is addressed to Miss Watanabe. So we are going to have capital D, dear Miss, capital M, dear Miss, or it can be abbreviated, dear M M S period, space, Watanabe. Then comma. I attended your career planning workshop at the Trace College Library on 15 December 2018. So, capital I. I attended your career planning workshop at the Trace College Library, then spelling of library, on 15 December 2018, or it can be December 15, 2018. Then, we'll have what? Continuation of it. Your presentation was just... Your presentation was just what I needed uh, to organize my ideas, my thoughts. Dealing with, dealing with uh, writing a resume. Then period. Would it be possible, would it be possible uh, for you uh, to send me copies of your resume writing guidelines, spelling of guidelines, comma, the worksheet, comma, and the sample, and the sample, period. Unfortunately, comma, you ran out of these handouts, T-H-E-S-E, -E, you ran out of these handouts or you ran out of handouts before you have gotten to me. Okay, you have gotten to me. Period. Then we can add hoping for good merit. Hoping for, for, for positive response. Then sincerely, capital S, sincerely yours, comma, Menard B. Banca Jr., capital M, capital B, capital B, proper noun, and of course, space for signature. So, if ever there are other errors that you have noticed, Anyway, you can check this in your Google Classroom as well as you can check also the ideas presented in the body of the letter. So, you check also the, the facts in it. So, just like the Dear Miss Salazar, wherein it should be Dear Miss Watanabe. So, check for the facts, not just, not just the punctuation, spelling, and grammar rules, but also check the facts in the given given exercise okay let's have the next slide the next activity were you able to identify and correct the errors do you think an employer will feel bad about receiving such letter from a job applicant or from an employee is it 
of utmost importance to adhere to proper grammar and apply appropriate text formatting? What is the answer? Is it yes or no? The answer is what? For the last question, it is yes. How about, the, how about on the first question? Were you able to identify and correct the errors? Yes. Do you think an employer will feel bad about receiving such letter from a job applicant or from an employee? Yes, again. Is it at most importance to adhere to proper grammar and apply appropriate text formatting? Yes, also. So we have three yeses. So if you, all, if you answer yes in all of these questions, then you agree that mechanics is another essential property of a well-written text. So let's go on. What is it? Generally, mechanics is essential in all types of writing because it describes the technical aspects of writing. It also serves as a road sign to guide learners like you on how to use words appropriately in terms of conventions such as spelling, punctuation, capitalization, and others. Okay? So, essential in all types of writing. As I mentioned, in every composition that you are being asked to write as well as other activities such as Poster making, you are being required to deal with mechanics, particularly the, the correct grammar in it, the spelling, the punctuation, capitalization. So those are the typical errors that writers are committing whenever they write something. So look at the, look at the image. You have here what? That's the symbol for paragraph. Then the, the period inside of a circle, there should be a period in it. Then whenever you encircle a word or a figure, as what is being said there, spell. Then you have the I to capital, to capitalize. Then for 300,000, so you use figures. Then transpose, you interchange the position. The Amnesty International, it's not international amnesty. Then spelling, members. No paragraph, meaning to say, that, uh, that when soldiers must be connected to be hurt. So there's no additional paragraph. Then next, we have join over because the space is what? They are separated. It should be internationals. Then we have uh, plush left. So move it going to the left. Next, we have indent lowercase. Okay, we have the indent lowercase. The government officials receive, so indent it. Then lowercase for the word thousands. And erase the word do, erase. Then the spelling of barbaric. Okay? So that's a, that's a, that's a sample of a copyright material. Okay? So copy readers and headline writers are expected to be good when it comes to editing. Editing grammar errors in... A material being given to them but of course as a student who has learned something about mechanics or you the one who's listening by now dealing with our lesson lesson for mechanics as one of the properties of well-written text so it's only expected that by now you have the basic knowledge that you have to be particular with your grammar or with the so-called mechanics in your written text. So you are not going to be, uh, to be asked to come up with such output. But that is what? That is being done by someone who is really what? Good when it comes to noticing grammar errors or whenever you are being asked to edit a paper be, uh, during the drafting of it, the first reading, whenever you are in an activity wherein uh, you are asked to exchange papers and read on the articles, compositions, paragraphs of your classmate. Uh, instead of what? Instead of keep on erasing the words there, then writing again new words, then why not apply the use of copy reading symbols, okay? But how can you use the copy reading symbols if you cannot see the grammar errors themselves? So the first thing is that you must be able to make yourselves aware of grammar. That's why in mechanics, that is what? One of the things that you must deal with. No? You must deal with. Especially uh, the knowledge about spelling, punctuations, capitalizations. Because usually, they are the common errors. 
because at this point at this point you are already aware of grammar you are in the senior high school you are grade 11 so what you are usually committing is the error in terms of spelling punctuations and capitalizations but when it comes to grammar in a way you are applying what you have learned since elementary up to now okay or up to uh, junior high school because in senior high school it is seldom the, that we talk about grammar na? so it is expected that you have them already uh, in you so you will just be activating your knowledge about them okay so again uh, under what is it mechanics is essential in all types of writing so let's proceed to the next uh, slide I would like you to pay attention as I read this example. I can never forget my class school year because they were so active and responsible in class. They always work together well in doing their assignments, performing group and individual tasks, submitting their projects on time, keeping the classroom speak and span. They are worth remembering for everything that they did inside and outside the campus. They always help one another. They seldom got themselves in conflict with, I, with anyone in the class. So, it is apparent that the above example is quite difficult to read because of the lack of two important conventions, punctuations and capitalizations. That's why you notice I was running out of air as I read it because as what we have learned from our teachers in elementary, if there's no punctuation, there's no comma, there's no period, then do not stop. If there's comma, pause for a while. If there's period, then pause a little longer and proceed reading. And how will you know that uh, how will you know that you are encountering or dealing with the second sentence of course it begins with capital letter so those are the first two important conventions uh, dealing with mechanics so the punctuations and capitalization so in addition you cannot easily understand the message it sends across its readers if we put appropriate punctuations it could be read in this way so let's have uh, the version the version of the same uh, text but this time uh, we apply the conventions dealing with punctuations and capitalization my class is worth remembering they were so active and responsible they always work together well in doing their assignments performing group and group and individual tasks submitting their projects on time and keeping the classroom speak and span everything that they did inside and outside the campus was worth remembering they always help one another also they seldom got themselves in conflict with anyone in the class the second paragraph is easier to read and understand through applying proper mechanics in writing, you can facilitate better transfer of message in your written text. You will never be lost as long as you keep in mind and follow the basic rules of subject verb agreement, capitalization, punctuations, paragraphing, and even spelling. So that's the good thing whenever you know how to make use of the so-called conventions in grammar. As what is said there, you have the uh, better transfer of message. So as a writer, you can always facilitate better transfer of message in your written text as you apply this uh, knowledge of yours talking about mechanics or the conventions under mechanics. So you have to pay attention to your subject verb agreement, capitalization, punctuations, paragraphing, and even spelling. Okay, let's have the next slide. For numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, write three sentences about COVID-19. Make sure to apply proper mechanics in writing. So I'll just provide a sentence per type of sentence. Declarative sentence, COVID-19 is a serious disease. Number 6, interrogative sentence, how can we stop this pandemic? Number 7, imperative sentence, stay at home. Number 8, exclamatory sentence, what a relief. I am free from COVID-19. Okay, so I hope you are guided on how to do this. Anyway, this is a basic lesson in grammar. So let's have the next activity. What I have learned, write your insights about the code from Terry Pratchett. 
let grammar, punctuation, and spelling into your life. Even the most energetic and wonderful mess has to be turned into sentences. So, how are we going to explain it? You search the internet, look for look for explanation dealing with this quote, but it is sad to say that there's no avail available explanation regarding this quotation coming from Terry Pratchett. So let grammar, punctuation, and spelling into your life, even the most energetic and wonderful mess, has to be turned into sentences. So it's a good reminder to all of us that we should make ourselves fully aware of grammar, of the use of punctuations and spelling, because in life, as we go on with this journey, we will be experiencing a lot of things and Sometimes we can no longer contain the emotions or the uh, emotions brought by the experiences that we wanted to tell about them to other people or we wanted to write them all. So how can we do so if we know nothing about grammar, punctuation, and spelling? That's why it is really true that what? That the most and wonderful, that the most energetic and wonderful mess has to be turned into sentences. So, as if grammar, punctuation, spelling are already part of our life, we have to make ourselves aware of them. Because again, we are, we are going to use them daily as we go on, uh, go on living in this world. Of course, uh, aside from what I've said, I would like you to provide your own explanation regarding that quotation. So, check your Google Classroom, okay? Let's proceed. What I can do. A famous American writer and orator, Frederick Douglass, once said, Once you learn to read, you will be forever free. Douglass meant that reading gives you the freedom to explore the world and bring that world into a new dimension of learning and discovery. Do you mainly agree or disagree with him? What are some of the effects of reading such as books, newspapers, magazines, and even e-books in our lives? Are these effects mainly negative, positive, or both? Explain your position in an essay of five paragraphs. Use specific examples to support your view. Observe the mechanics in writing and be guided by the following criteria. Check your Google Classroom regarding this activity. For the previous activity, you are going to guide yourselves with this given rubric. Criteria, completeness, five points. Did you write to the prompt? Did you write enough? Was your essay complete? Content, another five points. Did your story have a beginning, middle, and end? Third criteria, language, five points also. Did you use clear and thoughtful language? Did you use transitional devices? Did you use specific examples to support your view? And last criteria, formatting organization, five points, all in all 20 points. A short story broken up into paragraphs. So you do, your, you do the personal rating, the assessment of your own work by yourself before you submit the final output uh, in the Google Classroom of ours, okay? So check again the Google Classroom uh, dealing with the previous activity, having the criteria that I just finished reading, okay? Let's have the last activity. Additional activity. Create a short three to five minute blog about the importance of mechanics in written text. You may choose to have it uploaded in any social media platform or just send it via email or private message. Be guided by the following criteria. So talking about this activity, I would like you to again create a three to five minute blog, at least three minutes, minimum of three minutes, maximum of five. If you will go beyond, it can be seven minutes, okay? So, the blog will be about importance of mechanics and written text. Or it can be about importance of language use in written text. Of course, if you will be uh, choosing importance of language use in written text, you go back to the 
previous lecture video that we had that talk about language use as one of the four properties of a well-written text. And if you chose importance of mechanics in written text, you deal with this lecture video. Okay? Let's have the rubric for this activity. Let's tackle the criteria, the rubric for the blog that you will be making. So the content, five points. Did the blog include topics on grammar, capitalization, punctuation, spelling, and paragraphing? So you will follow that criterion if you chose talking about the importance of mechanics in written text. But if you talk, if you chose the importance of language use in written text, then of course the content should be about language use. The important uh, discussion or the important details about language use, talking about the, the five major issues, also the, the characteristics of effective language, okay? And other important details coming from the lecture video featuring language use. Speech and grammar, does the blogger speak fluently or is there any grammatical error? So there are two uh, things that you must remember as you deal with speech and grammar in your video blog or in your blog, okay? Then third criteria, Video quality. Is the video well recorded and framed? Is it digitally enhanced and cohesive? So, see to it that the what? The, the portions of your blog are complete and they are arranged, uh, they are arranged properly. So, there is cohesion among the parts of your blog, okay? And the last uh, criteria or the criterion, we have sound quality. Is the sound clear and understandable? Is the volume appropriate? So the total points will be 20, uh, 20 points. So it would be best that before you submit, you attach the file in the Google form. Then you rate your video first before sending it to me, before attaching it in the Google form. Because what is attached there will be the one that I'm going to uh, to grade, okay, to give score. So, see to it that it's the best version of your blog talking about importance of mechanics or importance of language use in written text. So, good luck. I do believe that you can do it anyway. In your oral communication class, that's one of the activities. Only by this time that you will be talking about uh, lessons coming from reading and writing. So what you have learned from our lessons this week, okay? So if you do still have questions, clarifications regarding this activity, do not hesitate to send me a private message. So that would be all regarding the activity on making a blog. Thank you. Have a good day and God bless us all.